Ivan Ivanovich, can you describe Little Orpheus to me? Of, of course. <laughs> it was uh, large and round and had something of a disagreeable smell. I was referring to its technical specification. Well, General, I am no man of science, but it had this uh, radio thing that I was supposed to use to let the surface know I had arrived, and uh, some sort of battery wrapped in this lead box. But I was told to not touch anything under any circumstances, and I did notice the engineers who worked on it were quite a shifty bunch. The little Orpheus device contained a radio transmitter capable of sending a signal through miles of solid rock. In order to boost this, a powerful energy source was required. An atomic bomb, comrade Prevalov. An atomic bomb that you have lost somewhere below the Earth's crust. Ah. Yes, that bomb. <laughs> of course, General, I can explain everything. But it is a long and somewhat complicated story. And let me assure you, this is not a case of milking chickens. But you won't understand where your bomb and little Orpheus has ended up unless I start at the very beginning and you let me tell you where I've been for the last three years. <laughs> From the beginning, then. But this had better be good. Oh, good, General. It's more than good. It's extraordinary. And it began like this. An extraordinary sight! I realized this must be the fabled land of Plutonia, as documented by the brilliant scholar Obrachev. A trail of destruction carved by the rocket drill led down into the wild and mysterious jungle. The rocket drill itself must have snapped in half somewhere below Kamchatka, and little Orpheus bounced out and became lost in that prehistoric forest. If I was ever to get home, my mission was clear, to find Little Orpheus. I steeled myself and plunged deeper into that prehistoric jungle where insects the size of dogs buzzed around. Dogs. What sort of dogs? I beg your pardon, General? Large dogs or small dogs? Big...